welcome to Zaatar and Zaytun. Today we're going to learn how to make mena ish. You can top it with zaatar, tomato and onion, or even my favourite, kishik. But today we're actually going to focus on making the dough. First we're going to make the yeast mixture. You have to start with lukewarm water. Test it with your finger to make sure it's not too hot. If it's too hot it will kill the yeast. For one cup of water I'm going to be using half a teaspoon of sugar and about one tablespoon of dried active yeast. Always check the expiry date on your yeast. Uh, mix it well and leave it for about 10 minutes until it starts to foam. If you want a richer dough, you can substitute half of the water with some warm milk. I know many of my friends who own restaurants and bakeries prefer to use the milk method, but it's really up to you. I'm using three cups of strong white bread flour you can use um, all-purpose or plain flour, but the overall texture will be less chewy, so it's worth going out of your way to buy the bread flour. Next, I add just under a teaspoon of salt to the flour. Then I add about three tablespoons of mild olive oil. I don't use extra virgin olive oil, but that, that's not for cooking and it can't handle high heat. So any mild or regular olive oil will do. If you don't have olive oil, you can also use vegetable oil. That's also fine. Put the yeast mixture in and give it a rough stir to make a scraggly dough. You can knead this by hand for about 10 minutes, but you have to really work it well to get that gluten going. Otherwise, just use a stand mixer or a food processor. Within the first two minutes, the dough should come together. Now I can see here it's a little bit dry, so I'm gonna add like a tablespoon at a time of water to make sure it's nice and smooth. I need this in the stand mixer for about eight minutes on the first setting. Before I got my stand mixer, I actually used to make this in the food processor with a dough blade. It comes out practically the same, um, but it's just a lot messier. I need it for about a minute in the food processor because it's much faster. Okay, so here's the dough I made with the stand mixer. Um, and as you can see, it's not too sticky, it's not too dry in my hand. The more you make this dough, ajin as we call it, the more you'll start to notice the smell, the texture, um, and you'll develop like a sixth sense to how it should be. Okay, so now I'm covering it with a little bit of mild olive oil um, to prevent it from sticking to the bowl. And then you can either cover the bowl with plastic wrap, or here I've got a, a dampened tea towel. Leave it for about two hours to double in size. Um, and here's the fun bit, punch it when you, <laughs> when you uncover it. I don't know why that's just so satisfying. If it's a very hot day, I may only need to leave it out for an hour. And if it's a very cold day, what I'll do is turn on my oven at the lowest setting um, for about five minutes, and then I'll turn it off and put the dough in there to prove, almost like a proving oven. You can know if the dough is ready, um, if you poke it, it rebounds a little bit. Um, that means, you know, it's, it's ready to roll. I'm gonna flour my board and divide up um, the dough ball into about eight smaller dough balls. You don't have to do anything silly like measure it or anything. Um, just, you know, use your eye, trust your instinct. Once I've finished dividing the dough balls up, I'm gonna transfer them to a plate um, and I'm gonna roll them nice and smooth and tuck them in on themselves um, and here they're going to have like a little second proving which makes them actually easier to roll into a round shape. Actually now um, my husband's going to take over, I didn't just suddenly develop man hands. Um, he kind of rolls them out a little bit better than me and I accept that. Um, first I'm going to flatten them or I should say he's going to flatten them into discs. Um, this will give you the rough shape. Manaish is not supposed to be thick. It's not a deep pan pizza. Um, so keep working that dough, roll it one way, flip it, add more flour if you have to, then roll it out the other way. Um, and you kind of want to get it like this thin. When you're done, transfer it to a non-stick pizza pan and turn your oven on at the highest setting while you make your filling. So here I have two tablespoons of zaatar. Uh, and I'm going to add again mild or regular olive oil, not the extra virgin because it will just burn way too quickly. Um, stir it together, um, bringing it in from the sides until you have a nice consistency. 
You don't want it too runny, otherwise it'll be too oily, and you don't want it too thick, um, otherwise you know it'll be difficult to spread. Drizzle a little of the za'atar on the dough um, and spread it out with your hands. I know it's a little messy, but it's better than using a spoon, which risks tearing it. Keep spreading it out until um, you have a nice thin layer. You don't want it too thick because it will taste too intense. Za'atar has a really strong flavor. Once you've spread the za'atar mixture, um, outstretch three of your fingers and lightly dimple um, the surface. This is so it won't bubble up too much. The manushi needs about seven to 10 minutes in a preheated oven. Um, you know when it's done, when the edges start to brown, don't over bake it or it will become a cracker, especially with za'atar. The full recipe is available on our blog, za'atarandzaytun.com, where you can find loads of other Manaish recipes. Make sure you like, share and subscribe and see you next time.